What is a TTRPG? TTRPG stands for Tabletop Role-Playing Game. In a TTRPG, a group of players and a game master work together to tell a story. Most of the game takes place in their collective imagination. The most well-known TTRPGs take place in fantasy settings. These stories can draw inspiration from any genre. How do you play a TTRPG? Short answer, guide your character through the story. This could mean thinking your way through a problem, initiating and resolving conflict, or just being in the right place at the right time. To keep the stories interesting, many game systems use dice to determine outcomes within the world of the story. In addition to traditional dice with six sides, also called a d6, some game systems use special dice. How can I play a TTRPG? Step one, assemble your party. To assemble your party, Decide who will be the Game Master. All other participants are called the players. The Game Master is also known as the Storyteller, or Dungeon Master. They are responsible for describing the world of the story and applying the results of a character's actions to any given scenario. The players create the characters and control their actions in the story. Step two, establish norms. Next, establish a set of norms for your game. In the interest of ensuring all players enjoy the game, create a set of guidelines. If some players are particularly squeamish, agree to keep the gore to a minimum. If players are more interested in action than dialogue, agree to describe conversations instead of acting them out. Look after yourselves. Try to avoid plot points that would be painful for some players and make sure that your physical needs are being met. It's good to have water or a snack to fuel your creativity. Step three, create characters. Always start with the concept. You get to decide how your character looks, feels, and behaves. You decide what their virtues and flaws are and what they choose to do in different situations. You can choose to share as little or as much about your character with the other players as you like. Stealing from fiction is allowed, but no real people though. Hi, my name is Jason Wallace. J. Uh, my character's name is TL. She is a she is a tiefling who is also a used car salesman. Uh, how long have you played tabletop games for? Gosh, I've been playing tabletop games since I could crawl. But uh, yeah, yeah, I've been playing at least twenty years now for sure. No, I mean that seriously, twenty years, I promise. Hi, my name is Christy, and my character's name is Mrs. Doppelganger. She's 70 years young, a retired teacher, and her skills include being a calming influence, and virtue is patience, but her flaw is that she's a hypochondriac. How long have you played D&D for, or tabletop RPGs in general? I played my first RPG in 2003. Hi, my name is Dylan Wright. I'm playing Archie Ford. He's the guy you call when you need a guy. He's very quick thinking. Uh, his virtue is that he's very loyal, but his flaw is that he will often sacrifice himself to save other people. Uh, I've been playing tabletop games for only a couple of years. Hello, my name's Andrea. Uh, my character's name is Riley. Their pronouns are they, he. Um, they're actually a medical student, and I based them off of me when I was going into nursing school. Uh, their virtue is that they're patient. Their flaw is that even though they're patient, they can still get angry when they are angry. Um, they have medical knowledge, quick thinking, and a very strong immune system. Yeah. How long have you played tabletop games for? Um, just a few years, maybe like four or five. Hello, my name is Andrew Frost. I'm a game who likes to do a little bit of improvisation for a main focus of storytelling with a little twinge of horror and fantastical elements in there as the game requires. How long have you been playing tabletop games? A little over 17 years now. Attributes are primary traits. The basic makeup your, of your character's character. Are they the brains or the brawn? The fighter or the feeler? What have they spent their time doing and honing? Where does your character excel, and where do they struggle? Skills are actions or tasks that characters do during the story. 
Special skills are skills that typically require training, practice, or education to successfully complete. Is your character good with computers? Do they excel at long distance running? Do they know a lot about chemistry? Do they excel at solving puzzles? Maybe they're trained in the first aid. You never know what might be helpful. A character's virtue is their most moral behavior. Examples include patience, loyalty, honesty, gratitude, gratitude, and compassion. A character's flaw is their least moral behavior. Examples include anger, envy, and greed. That is everything that you need in order to play World War Seabus. We will now read over the rules once more and then introduce you to the scenario. Thank you for watching. How to play World War Seabus. The Game Master decides on a scenario and describes it to the players. Think of it like the opening of a movie. We meet the characters, get to know the setting and the circumstances of the story they're about to tell. The players decide what their characters say and do in the scenario. The players are like actors who decide how their characters think and behave. Some players enjoy speaking like their characters. Others are more comfortable describing how their character speaks. The game master decides if an action by a character requires a skill check and decides the difficulty level, easy, medium, or hard. An easy action is something that requires little training or effort, or current conditions make it likely that the character will complete the action. A medium action is an action typically requiring some knowledge or experience, or the current conditions make it unknown whether the character will complete the action. A hard action requires specialized education, training, and or experience, or current conditions are actively working against the player. The player rolls a skill check. Every skill is linked to an attribute. Each point in that attribute adds one die to the roll. Each die that lands on a one or a six is considered a success. Passing the skill check means meeting or exceeding the difficulty level. Easy, one to two successes, medium, three or four successes, and hard, five or six successes. Not every action requires a skill check. The game master decides which attribute is needed to perform a certain skill. The game master shares the result with the players and decides how that result affects the story. And now for the premiere of World War Seabus. The zombie apocalypse begins at noon on a Wednesday. The citizens of Columbus, Ohio assume that the tornado sirens are just the standard weekly test. When the sirens continue blaring, they assume there has been some malfunction. After 30 minutes, police and ambulance sirens join in, and everyone thinks to themselves, hmm, maybe something's wrong. The characters are all occupied at the library when the first zombie enters the parking lot at 12.30 p.m. When people begin screaming at the front entrance, everyone rushes to a window in time to witness the zombie attacking a person and another zombie entering the parking lot. An announcement comes over the loudspeaker. May I have your attention, please? The building is now on lockdown due to a disturbance in the parking lot. Please move away from all doors and windows. The authorities have been notified and are on their way. Just then, the sound of the tornado sirens outside suddenly ceases and is replaced by a series of thuds as the zombies outside begin pounding on the front entrance door. You must survive until help arrives. What do you do?